Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we're going to be reading 2 Kings 11, Jeremiah 20, and Isaiah 27. Now let's pray before we get into the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this day that we might spend with you and get to know you a little bit more. Thank you so much for all the blessings that you've poured out on us that we don't deserve and allowing us to be a part of your perfect purpose. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins that we might have this relationship with you, be able to share in your glory and dwell in your heavenly kingdom. Please guide us with your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts and our minds to anything that you would have us to know in your word today. Please forgive us of our sins and lead us away from temptation that we might be more like you and glorify you in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's get started. Second Kings 11 When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram and sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes, who were about to be murdered. She put him and his nurse in a bedroom to hide him from Athaliah, so he was not killed. He remained hidden with his nurse at the temple of the Lord for six years while Athaliah ruled the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada sent for the commanders of units of a hundred, the Karaites and the guards, and had them brought to him at the temple of the Lord. He made a covenant with them and put them under oath at the temple of the Lord. Then he showed them the king's son. He commanded them, saying, This is what you are to do. You who are in the three companies that are going on duty on the Sabbath, a third of you guarding the royal palace, a third at the sir gate, and a third at the gate behind the guard, who take turns guarding the temple, and you who are in the other two companies that normally go off Sabbath duty, are all to guard the temple for the king. Station yourselves around the king, each of you with weapon in hand. Anyone who approaches your ranks is to be put to death, Stay close to the king wherever he goes. The commanders of units of a hundred did just as Jehoiada the priest ordered. Each one took his men, those who were going on duty on the Sabbath and those who were going off duty, and came to Jehoiada the priest. Then he gave the commanders the spears and shields that had belonged to King David and that were in the temple of the Lord. The guards, each with weapon in hand, stationed themselves around the king near the altar and the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehoiada brought out the king's son and put the crown on him. He presented him with a copy of the covenant and proclaimed him king. They anointed him, and the people clapped their hands and shouted, Long live the king! When Athaliah heard the noise made by the guards and the people, she went to the people at the temple of the Lord. She looked, and there was the king, standing by the pillar, as the custom was. The officers and the trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Then Athaliah tore her robes and called out, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada, the priest, ordered the commanders of units of a hundred, who were in charge of the troops, bring her out between the ranks and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said, She must not be put to death in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her as she reached the place where the horses entered the palace grounds, and there she was put to death. Jehoiada then made a covenant between the Lord and the king and people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people. All the people of the land went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and idols to pieces and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Then Jehoiada, the priest, posted guards at the temple of the Lord. He took with him the commanders of hundreds, the Karaites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and together they brought the king down from the temple of the Lord, and went into the palace, entering by way of the gate of the guards. The king then took his place on the royal throne. All the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was calm, because Athaliah had been slain with the sword at the palace. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign.
Jeremiah 20 When the priest Peshur, son of Emer, the official in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten and put in the stocks at the upper gate of Benjamin at the Lord's temple. The next day, when Peshur released him from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you is not Peshur, but terror on every side. For this is what the Lord says, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. With your own eyes you will see them fall by the sword of their enemies. I will give all Judah into the hands of the king of Babylon, who will carry them away to Babylon or put them to the sword. I will deliver all the wealth of this city into the hands of their enemies. All its products, all its valuables, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah they will take it away as plunder and carry it off to Babylon. And you, Peshur, and all who live in your house will go into exile to Babylon. There you will die and be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. Cursed be the day I was born. May the day my mother bore me not be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought my father the news, who made him very glad, saying, A child is born to you, a son. May that man be like the towns the Lord overthrew without pity. May he hear wailing in the morning, a battle cry at noon. For he did not kill me in the womb, with my mother as my grave, her womb enlarged forever. Why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame? Isaiah 27 In that day the Lord will punish with his sword, his fierce, great and powerful sword, Leviathan the gliding serpent, Leviathan the coiling serpent. He will slay the monster of the sea. In that day, sing about a fruitful vineyard. I, the Lord, watch over it. I water it continually. I guard it day and night, so that no one may harm it. I am not angry. If only there were briars and thorns confronting me, I would march against them in battle. I would set them all on fire, or else let them come to me for refuge. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. In days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will bud and blossom and fill all the world with fruit. Has the Lord struck her as he struck down those who struck her? Has she been killed as those were killed who killed her? By warfare and exile you contend with her. With his fierce blast he drives her out as on a day the east wind blows. By this, then, will Jacob's guilt be atoned for, and this will be the full fruit of the removal of his sin. When he makes all the altar stones to be like limestone crushed to pieces, no Asherah poles or incense altars will be left standing. The fortified city stands desolate, an abandoned settlement forsaken like the wilderness. There the calves graze, there they lie down, they strip its branches bare. When its twigs are dry, they are broken off, and women come and make fires with them, for this is a people without understanding. So their maker has no compassion on them, and their creator shows them no favor. In that day the Lord will thresh from the flowing Euphrates to the Wadi of Egypt, 
and you, Israel, will be gathered up one by one, and in that day a great trumpet will sound. Those who are perishing in Assyria and those who are exiled in Egypt will come and worship the Lord on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. Thanks for joining and listening today. If you have any questions, leave them down here in the comments section and I'll be making some videos where I go through some of those questions, show you some of the questions that I had, and maybe we can find some answers or even dive into it together. Thanks guys, hit the like and subscribe and come back for more. All right guys, take it easy. Bye, God bless.